Share Shootout brought to you by Lion of Africa Insurance, ensuring South Africa's future. You're watching CNBC Africa. I'm Bruce Whitfield. Welcome to Share Shootout. I'm judge, juror and executioner right here on the most vicious stock picking show on TV. Let me tell you what's going to happen this evening. It's our Tuesday dose of stock picking fisticuffs. And it is, well, I suppose true that once upon a time there was a man called Tokyo Sekwale who was a TV star. Now, is it true that President Jacob Zuma didn't understand the rules of The Apprentice South Africa? Tokyo was playing the game. He said, Jay-Z, you're dismissed. The president responded, no, Tokyo. Manga Ong says, you're dismissed. And Tokyo walked. We also wonder what disease the pig had for him to be cured and why there are only seven colors in a rainbow. We don't know the answers to any of these very, very difficult questions. But in the next 30 minutes of bare knuckle stock picking frivolity, a lot will be revealed. Our first contender for this week's share shootout king title with five appearances, four wins and one loss. Gary Boyson of Bunani Private Clients. His challenger boasts a record of three appearances, two wins and a loss. He wasn't happy about that, but he's come back. Byron Lotto from Vestac this evening. Most of our guests have picked three shares and they're keeping those close to their chests. Neither knows what the other holds, but at some point during the proceedings, they will have to pick at least one of their competitors to stocks. The longer they leave it, the more likely they are to have to accept, to accept something they really don't like. He just got 30 seconds to argue their stock pick, so let's let the share shoot out begin. He's taller, <laughs> so I think he should go first. Less oxygen up there, apparently. So, okay, Byron, should we make should we make Gary go first? I like your first pick, Gary. I find it incredibly courageous. A 13 billion rand market cap. He doesn't have a clue. On a P.E. ratio of nearly 18 times. Expensive. No, it's expensive. <laughs> um, yeah. He who lives in a glass house should never throw stones. <laughs> Grinrod in 30 seconds, why do you like it? Okay, Grinrod, uh, obviously, you know, it, uh, it's a company that has been in the doldrums. It's a shipping business uh, that is very cyclical and, and shipping has obviously dropped off. But during the, the, the boom times, they invested a lot in rails and port uh, uh, businesses, which are doing very well, stabilized their earnings. They've also got a bank in there. And, uh, you know, if you, you look at the Baltic Dry Index, which is a leading indicator, massive tick up now. Uh, a stable company generating good, uh, good revenue at the moment, but uh, something that can really boost up uh, if, if the shipping cycle has turned with a growing economy. Okay, there we go. Within his 30 seconds, Grinrod, you call it expensive. He says it's been in the doldrums, which is a nice shipping joke, although they don't use sailing <laughs> ships as far as I know, so they don't have to worry about the doldrums. Grinrod, can you tolerate? Um, I shut Grinrod down okay. um, on the basis that the shipping world is still in a lot of trouble. Um, you know, we had massive boom times in 2006 and before the 2008 crisis and everyone built ships and uh, there's just too much capacity out there. And Grinrod still, even though they've got other businesses on the side, still rely on that shipping business. And it's even more cyclical than other businesses because while those ships aren't operating, they're actually losing money. Um, I was also aware that uh, that Maputo port that they have is under mm. a bit of a uh, bit of uh, um, trouble. Apparently, it's not deep enough for a lot of uh, ah. the bigger ships. Kids. So there are definitely a couple of issues there. Which fair fair keep enough, a far couple of issues. But the Baltic Dry Index. This is a line on a graph, which, when it's going up, is good because it tells us that there is more global trade going on. Grunrod is not restricted to the Maputo port. It has mm. got ships. It can send anywhere in the world to pick up practically anything depending on the what do they call it the class of, of, of yeah. ship um, whatever however that works but the point is they are quite flexible wherever the trade is they can go they can bid for the transport work yeah hundred percent I mean especially you're mentioning obviously Maputo they do have some of the smaller you know not the Cape size ships I think it's the handy size um, which, which I mean can go all the way to China they can get into there and, and it's actually below the you know where the China needs put in that regulation saying they wouldn't have certain size ships docking mm. their ships actually slip in underneath that radar so they can still export uh, you know South Africa African coal there. Also, you've got to remember, you know, their partnership with Vitol. Um, which what is, is Vitol? Vitol, it's a trading company. It's about the 
size of uh, uh, Glencore, you, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, they, they're going to use basically this partnership out of Maputo to ply uh, trade all the way up the, the east coast of Africa, which uh, I think I is, a, is a nice opportunity. Uh, do for they them. have armor plated ships? Because we're going <laughs> up the east coast yeah, of Africa. Watch out for Salon Malia, but yeah. Your, 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 uh, your insurance rates are going to go up a little bit. You're not buying the story, though. You're not buying the trade story, the global trade story. We get signs and signals, and the, the data is so confusing at the moment, Byron. Is that one of the reasons why you look at it and you say, you don't buy necessarily that China's growing, that the US is really recovering, that this global trade story is intact? Yeah, not only are they fighting off pirates, but they're also fighting off uh, a Chinese economy that is definitely slowing down. Um, and that's where most of the exports and imports are, are, are going to and coming from. And we saw Chinese export numbers come in um, and we actually saw a drop for the first time uh, since the, the financial crisis hit. So um, I think that potential is still um, uh, a big issue for, for the shipping market, which is still overcapacitized. Okay, okay. with well, that big word there. <laughs> <laughs> I, <don't laughs> I got it right. Overcapacitized. <laughs> no, we, so we can make up new words and people will write them down and go, oh, we must use that. Overcapacitized. It's a new word. <laughs> which means there are too many ships. Right, uh, the, the, the words you do know, however, as I shoot this down. Shut down. You shot down. You shot down. Gary. It's a long way to fall from those mm. heady heights. Now, captain <coughs> of hypocrisy and wordsmith of the year, 2013, <laughs> how dare you call Grinrod on a multiple of 18 times expensive when your first pick is one of the most perpetually expensive shares on the JC? 30 seconds on famous brands, please. Um, Famous Brands uh, is a very exciting business. The macro story is great. Um, there's no secret that people love to eat out in South Africa. Um, uh, apparently the restaurants grow at double the uh, speed of the GDP in the country. Um, they have a great set of brands, the best, um, the best around, and they're looking to piggyback off ShopRite who are going up into the rest of Africa. And I think that kind of trend is also going to be fantastic. Apparently there was a wedding in the, in the KFC in, in Nigeria recently, and that's the kind of thing we're looking for. <laughs> One wedding <laughs> doth not a profit to make. But yeah, I mean, the, the, you get a wedding at a KFC, um, they don't own KFC. KFC is one of the most globally recognized brands. If you go to, uh, for example, to the West Indies, KFC is kind of up there. You, you, you save up to go to KFC. But famous brands, fantastic brands in South Africa, really good suite of brands, lots of really good manufacturing capacity. They're destroying mug and beans, eggs Benedict, but that's an issue I'll take up <laughs> to the chief executive. Um, give me a sense as to whether or not you like famous brands at any price, Gary. Um, yeah, I like it. Yeah, I like everything at some price, but not, not this price. Uh, mm. yeah, 28 times uh, multiple is, is too expensive. Answer me this question. Mm. When was it trading below a 20 <laughs> times multiple. Has it ever, yeah. in the last 10 years, <laughs> traded below 20 times? Probably not, but uh, I mean, and you look at the sector, you look at something like Taste as well, also trading at 20 times P. So I mean- But Taste is trading on the coattails of, of famous brands, because everybody sees this as a mini-me. Perhaps, I don't know, Carlo Gonzaga is quite, quite passionate about, about his quite. business. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't know, like looking at famous brands, I mean, yes, like Byron says, it's going up into Africa, which, which is great, but there, there are huge concerns around that. I mean, I think that that PE, you, you're paying for expansion, you're paying for, you, you know, then to roll out another, you know, thousand franchise stores. I think the opportunity in famous brands when it was one round and you, you, you know, that's, that's when oh, you come needed, on. That's when you needed to buy it. Now, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anglo-American, when it was listed, <laughs> there was the opportunity yes. in every I mean, company. It, I, think, I think it's looking a little bit pricey. I think uh, investors are paying for the, the earnings before they've seen them out of Africa. And yes, everyone's very optimistic. The company's very optimistic about the earnings potential in Africa. I think the supply chain issues in, in Africa, the electricity, the power, the power, um, you know, issues as well. I, I I think they're going to find it a difficult operating environment. Oh, um, all right. Fair enough. All of that is, is completely true. It is expensive. It is a tough environment. But that's where the money can be made, Byron. <laughs> and you just got to talk, spend five minutes with Kevin Hedewick to get the disciple of uh, qu quick service restaurants, fast food. He's just saying, look, South Africa is nowhere near. Africa is nowhere near where the rest of the world is. But, but the, the Kevin Hedewick story is a very powerful story. Yes, I mean, he's been fantastic. And just to counter what Gary said about input costs, um, it's the franchisee that takes that risk. Um, and that biz that's why that business model is so exciting because they lock in a client with their, their franchisee uh, to their manufacturing uh, plants and um, then they still take a portion of the revenues that that poor franchisee has to, ha has to send over every single time. So uh, I think at the end of the day, it's, it's more famous brands that's going to be the winner uh, rather than the franchisee. Although I'm, I'm sure a lot of them do very well. Gary, oh, they, they must, they must, but Gary's not buying it. You're shooting it down, Gary. Shooting it down. Okay, yeah. I mean, there's a fabulous 
fabulous fund manager, does small cap stocks in Cape Town, a guy by the name of Sean Stockett, who says a 12 rand is really expensive, a 16 bucks is really expensive, a 28 <laughs> rand is ridiculous, a 50 bucks, you can't expect me to buy it, and it's trading at nearly 100 rand a share. So when it's at 200, you can name and shame Gary. <laughs> yeah, I can say, Gary, you see, you missed out five years ago on the pick of the century. Tell me then, uh, Gary Boyson, why you think, oh, I don't know if you've ever had customer service from these guys, but Ellie's in 30 seconds, tell me why. Yeah, Ellie's, now this is, this is actually a bit more of a value play. I mean, Ellie's is, is trading on a PE of only nine, so it's, it's actually looking quite cheap. It's had a pullback off, off the 10 Rand level. Uh, they actually had a trading statement that uh, you know, wasn't released quite as soon as everyone expected. Still showing earnings up you know, between 30 and 40 percent. Disappointed the market a little bit, a lot of that coming from their DDT business, uh, which is the analog digital conversion, which is something that is going to happen. It's going to be a massive bumper for, for their profits. It's going to come through in 2014 instead. I think you're going to see huge earnings. I think you've had a nice pull back in time to enter now. Okay, we've got, we've got the fifth new communications minister in as many years, Byron. Surely this time, Eunice Karam is going to get it right. <laughs> He's going to be the guy who takes South Africa's uh, analog to digital television, and that's got to be good for Ellie's. Well, fortunately for Ellie's, their biggest client is a private company in the form of Nuspers, yep. or multi-choice. But, so they, but they're quite saturated, though, aren't they? I don't think so. Um, maybe in South Africa, but uh, you know, everyone can Ellie loves serve football. Can, can Ellie serve outside South Africa? Do they do that? Do they do that business? Um, yeah, as far as I know, they, okay. they are looking at expansion into Africa. All right, yeah. okay, carry on. And I think another. I, I mean, I like Ellie's. Um, I think another exciting, um, and it, it was reiterated the other day when Eskom said that they're going to increase tariffs, is that they're very much on re renewable energy. You walk into a builder's warehouse, and they've got um, a whole lot of re renewable energy products, and I think as uh, electricity prices increase, that's going to push the consumer to buy Eddie's goods. And if you live in my area and your power goes out from time to time, you need one of their generators too. Um, <laughs> when you look at it, I mean, he's actually been quite nice about Eddie's. Yeah. Um, he hasn't had to live <laughs> in sectional title and get them to fix the aerial from time to time when there's a thunderstorm. <laughs> However, at that point, you want to sell your shares in Eddie's. <laughs> but they've done well. It's, been, was a, it's mm. been one of the few IPOs that has actually been very rewarding for those initial shareholders, hasn't it, Gary? No, definitely. I think... Uh, the lowest it got was about a round. I mean, we started yeah. recommending it at two round. It's done very well for us. And we, we're looking at this as just a pullback to accumulate. Yeah, pullback to accumulate. You won't shoot it down. You're going to accept it. Yeah. Byron has accepted Ellie's. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a breakthrough. Byron has accepted <coughs> something. But yes, it is on a single digit multiple, which is significant. Okay, Mr. Your multiple was too high on Grinrod. Tell me why, Byron. <laughs> See, there's a theme coming through here. Um, why? Are you taking probably the most highly rated retailer in South Africa right now after ShopRite and saying to yourself, I'm prepared to still pay big bucks for Woolies in 30 seconds? Well, they've actually pulled back quite hard over the last few months. There were rumors that they were going to buy another big retailer. So that has pulled the share back, which is a great buying opportunity. I think they're the ultimate aspirational consumer stock in South Africa. You know, everyone strives to shop at Woolies. Um, they also focus on, a, on, on an exciting theme, which looks at health. Um, and also environmental sustainability, which um, for people, for wealthy people who can afford to shop there, are willing to pay up for that kind of stuff. Um, I think they got their clothing division right. They turned that round about five years ago. Um, and they stopped selling. That's where they're making all they their They stopped selling what they make, and they sell what the Australians <laughs> make in terms of country road. Well, and they make it in China, but uh, Australia yeah, design yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they call that design. Okay, um, big fan, very big fan of the new clothing lines within Woolworths. High cost, though, lots of competition in that space. If you're going to pay 700 bucks for a pair of jeans, you might as well buy suit. a pair of Levi's. <laughs> I didn't want to comment. <laughs> Those three shoulders you've got. Um, right. Gary, do you, do, you, do you like the Woolly story? Uh, I can't argue against Woolly. So, uh, but why do you argue against famous brands, which is are not that much more of a demanding multiple than Woolies? It serves a, a, famous brands arguably serves a broader market than Woolies does. Woolies is for snooty people who buy their clothes there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, again, you buy clothes at Woolies and you buy food at Woolies. Yeah. And, and to be fair, I mean, famous brands, uh, you're looking at, uh, you, you know, you're, you're buying steers and you're buying, uh, yeah, maybe you go to Tasha's, but you're buying debonairs. Woolies, you can go and get your healthy food there. And it's convenience. And I think that's actually the edge it has mm. over the other, the other so sort of local uh, food retailers anyway. It's, it's that convenience shopping. It's, it's absolutely fantastic for Woolies. And Pick and Pay's continued promise to threaten Woolies in that space <laughs> is the biggest damp squib this side of the <laughs> listing <laughs> of, of Mark Lamberti's thing, With what's it called? Transaction capital has been a damn squib. Um, but Pick and Pay's promise to provide uh, good quality ready meals and things is oh, a bigger damn squib. I don't than see Pick and Pay doing it with their distribution <laughs> no. at the moment. 
the moment. So no, it's been no, a shambles. Willie's, yeah, Willie's out of it. I mean, obviously, it, it's, we like it because it's specifically got the food and the, and the, uh, the apparel side of it. But uh, also with Ian Moyer coming in, he's really he's brought in best practices. And uh, you know, the efficiencies there are, they are fantastic. I mean, they, you, you literally can't shoot Willie's down. Even even on a, what, what is P? 22. 22 at the mm. moment. I mean, forward 16 now. Yeah, if you compare that oh, to yeah, something whatever. like ShopRite, <laughs> it's still cheap. If you compare it to the, the, the apparel guys, so if you look at uh, True Wiz, um, True Wiz, Fashini, yeah. et cetera, it is a little bit demanding, but you know, it's it's middle of the road. It's it's a good company. Okay, it's a good I'm, company. I'm not shooting it down. You like it. You're I'll not going to shoot it down. Yeah. You're going to accept it. Even at a multiple of 22 times, it has pulled back quite nicely as well, which gives that buying opportunity. Pick and pay, though, is really not being particularly exciting. New chief executive in place for six months. We're not seeing the results, and the share price actually from 44 bucks is sitting all the way at 37, 38 rand. Any hope for pick and pay? Why not buy pick and pay at 38 bucks rather than Woolies at an elevated level? Well, the thing is, pick and pay is a really price for recovery if you have a look at uh, their earnings ratio. Um, so most of the upsides are really priced in. Plus, they, like all the other retailers, are actually facing quite a tough consumer over the last six months or so. Um, but so as, as long-term investments, I think the retail sector will pick up, but you've got to pick out the best out of, out of the lot, and pick and pay is definitely not that. Okay, we're going to pause right there. More stock picks in just a moment. Don't go anywhere, because gloves off on the other side of this. Let's just recap where we are. Baron Lotter from Best, a big fan of famous brands and its products, I suspect. However, Gary Boyson, king of health, picture of well-being um, is not a fan of famous <laughs> brands he says you can do better elsewhere he is however is uh, is Gary Boyson a fan of Woolworths he says Woolworths epitomizes everything he likes in the company serves the higher market got decent margins coming through and it's nicely protected because where else is a woolly shopper really get a shop and then Gary Boyson's from Funani private clients uh, Grinrod and Ellie's are his two picks Ellie's uh, Grinrod got shot down but Ellie's got the big bar and lots of thumbs up more on the other side of this.